Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the session. In this session, we are going to talk about how to do file uploads. So in the last session, we talked about how to add items to the database using the insert query, uh, but we left out one thing inside the form, which was how to upload the images. So uploading files or uploading images is similar, and it's a bit different from how you normally send data to the server. So let's see how all this works. If you remember in the last class, we talked about this way where we get a list of items, uh, whatever items we uh, entered inside the form, it is sent back to our the same page which is add item.php and this goes here at the top and if is this uh, post array is populated because we are using the post method and the if the add key is set to any value, we don't care about the value, we are just saying that if it is set or not. If it is set, then we get all the things the user entered and then we create a query and then we run the query. And the query result will be either boolean, yes or no. So this is what we did in the last class. So now today what we are going to do is if the form submission, whatever form you are asking the user to submit, has a field which is not text. Okay, it could be files, it could be images, anything that is not text. So if the user wants to enter this data, it is not sent in the post array. How do we know this? Let's confirm it. Okay, so I'm going back to the code over here and I did this in the last class as well. So let's repeat it uh, for a revision and then we can move ahead with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, the var dump method, which is like a uh, you know debugging tool. So you can use it to dump uh, an associative array or an array. It cannot be done by using echo because echo can only display text. So it will need for loop to do all those things. So var dump will do everything inside one function. So we, do, we go ahead and use var dump on the post array. Okay, because I told you that whenever the form is submitted by post, the post array is populated. So we'll go to the var dump on the post array and uh, let's use exit because I don't want to execute the query. I just want to see the contents of the post array when the form has a picture. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to save this over here. Let's get back to our form page. And inside this page, I'm going to refresh my page and I'll add some item. It doesn't have to be you know, something specific because we're just testing it. And let's choose a file, say uh, any file would do. Let me do this one and then say 100. Here yeah, I'm going to say add now. So once you press the add button, you can see that the var dump worked and it gave me this, this text. Now what does it, this is an array, the associative array of the post. And what does it have? It has the PID, uh, which has a value of 101. It has name, which has a value of test. And it has image, uh, which has internet.png. Now this is not the image, it's the name of the image only, because it is transferring it as text right now and then we have the price which is 100 and then we have add which is the button and has the value of add so what is happening right now is it tried to send text back okay now let's let's go back and check something more so let's let me go back to inspect element and i'm going to go to networks I'm going to add item and go to headers and inside the headers you can see uh, this is what is sent back let, let me refresh it because the headers are not showing let me refresh this page okay and then let's go back and see the headers again see this is the headers so you'll have request response and this is where the data is sent so the data that is sent is form data okay it's it doesn't include it's text form data and it includes pid name image price and add so you can see that this is key value so it's sending the image as a key value pair so it's not sending the actual image it is just sending the text value Okay, so I made this graphical representation for you to understand what is the difference of when it submits with a file or without a file. So you have this image, which is the, uh, this, the, the browser, and it is making a request or uploading a form, submitting a form to the server, and whatever is passed between them has this packet. Okay, now there will be multiple packets, but let's assume that there is one packet right now, and this packet will have the HTTP headers, which will tell you know the source, the destination of the packet. And then for each HTTP packet, they have a payload. And this payload over here has two things, message header and message body. This message header usually contains, you know, the type of data that is included inside this 
inside this HTTP message. And then the message body will be the actual contents of the message, which is the key value pairs that we are trying to send back to the server. Now with files, this is a bit different. So let's go back and see, let's go to the next one and see, well, with files, whenever you try to upload the files, the HTTP header, whenever you try to send by HTTP header, the HTTP header will have multiple parts. So if you try to set the correct settings, okay, so let's come back to this image. Okay? Let's go back to our, our original code. And what I'm going to do is, over here is just make one tiny change. So if you go to the form tag, this is my form tag. And inside the form tag, I just add a new attribute. Okay, that name of that attribute is called ink type. Okay, ink type, it's no capital, sorry. And then the value should be multi-part multi-part slash form dash data. So I make this small change where I add this new attribute called encoding type, enc type, and the value is multi-part form data. I just make this small change and let me save the, my, my code and I'm going to go back to my, you know, the, the page add item. I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a dummy form submission with some image okay and I'm going to add this to the database now you see there is this, there's something happened over here if you look at it the array now has PID name price and add it doesn't have the image so I just made this tiny change where I add the encoding type to the form and the image is not sent as text now so let's go back to our you know this uh, inspect uh, tab and if you go down you can see that it's no longer sent as a single message because we added this new type called multi-part form data previously it was sending it as form data only so now it's I'm telling him that it's not a single type of form data it has multi-part form data so the form data has multiple items so if you click this arrow you can see that it is sending initially this is the boundary it starts here and then inside it, it has the content disposition, which is the type of the data, which is form data for now. And this is for all text. So whenever there is text, the, it will be form data. Whenever there is image, the form data will have another type, content type, which will specify that this is not just plain text. It includes something which is binary. Okay, so because we are transferring it over the internet, it has to be something which is tangible. So the content type here is image and the image type is png so we are sending this back to the server so what is happening here is i'm telling the browser by using that ink type as multi-part form data that the form submission will include binary data as well as text data this binary could be a file submission a pdf file uploads or uh, images videos whatever you like okay so what, what is happening essentially over here is you're trying to say that my form has data which is not of the same type. So it's sending everything that you enter in the form as separate messages uh, within the same HTTP message but broken down. So it has message boundaries. Okay. So if you go back to the image that uh, I was talking to you about, it has this HTTP message, the TCP message. And inside the TCP message, we have the HTTP headers. And then we have multi-part message. We, this is the boundary of the message. Okay, this is the boundary. The, the, when you when you saw the uh, inspect tab, it has message boundary. So this is the message boundary, and each message will have the message header, which will specify you know the the content type and the content disposition, and the content will be the actual value of that data. Okay, so this is this is how it is sending it now. So because the, this is how it sends it now, the file is available to us. But we just need to learn how to get this file okay so let's go back so this this is how form submission works so in summary whenever you try to send anything which is text without anything which is non-text it happens like this way so you have the message header and the message body every all the entire message is inside the message body all the fields together but when you do it with uploads it is broken down because you tell them that I'm sending multi-part form data. It breaks down every data into its own message and send them separately. 
So in this case, the files can also be sent because the type of the information you are sending is different. You don't have a single type for the entire message or the type is broken down. So this is what is happening. Okay. So let's uh, close this because we are done with this. So I'm going to go back now to our form. Let me go back. On the course website, we don't have a new file to download because we're going to edit the insert item uh, and the add item.php page only. But there is a cheat sheet available for file uploads, which will outline the steps that we need to do to upload files. Okay, uploading file is not a difficult thing, but it has some minor things that you have to remember. Okay, so these things are very important. Some things you may ignore with some type of inputs, but this is important. I will tell you each step how it is important as we go on. Okay, so let's let's do this. I'm going to close this as well because we already understand the, the part. Uh, so what I will do over here is we'll try to start to edit our page. So as you saw, the first instruction is set the method to post and ink type to multi-part form data. This is very important. You cannot send multi-part form data with using the get method because get method essentially adds everything to the URL. So you have to send everything inside the uh, in a multi-part form data so that is that has to be sent by using the post method so that things are sent inside the header the data is sent through the TCP header rather than sending it from the so rather than sending it in the uh, URL okay so and then you have to ensure that you have added this ink type without this the form will not work as you just saw if I don't put this the form doesn't send the file it just sends the name of the file which is useless Okay, so let's go back and see this is what I did. So this is the first step and I completed the first step. Now the second step is going up and now retrieving the file data because you know that the file is sent but we don't know where it is sent. It's not sent in post because I just did var dump for the post and we did not see even the name of the file is not there anymore. So the name is even deleted. So the file is sent in a different array. It is not sent inside the post array, it is sent inside a different array. So let's see which array is that. So I'm going to remove the var dump statement. Or yeah, we can keep the var dump statement because I, I can show you something. So inside of post, I will make it files. Okay. So files is the array which includes everything that we need for the files, only files, not, it will not include anything related to post array. The post array, still we need the post array because the data is sent inside the post array. But for files, we have it in a separate array called dollar underscore files. So I'm going to go back to my form page again. And this time I'm going to refresh this and add one to the one, say test. Okay. And we'll choose a file. So then add and you can see that this time this is not the post array this is my image array okay and inside the image image is first of all this this array which is the files array is a, a two dimensional associative array you know like a, you have to have two indexes why do we need that now imagine your form has like three areas when you need to upload the documents you know if you if you have a form that you have applying for a job they usually ask you for a cover letter and a CV and, and your profile picture, whatever, it doesn't matter. So they need multiple files. So if you have multiple files, how does this array know which file are you, you know, referring to in your code? So the first thing is it, the file array has a two dimensional associative array. So the first dimension is the name of the file that you are referring to. This could change if you have more than one file right and then the second item the second is fixed type so it tells you the properties of the file there are five properties that it records for each file that you upload and these properties are the name of the file a temporary location of the file the type of the file the size of the file and the error now let me explain to you what, what all these mean the name here is the name of the file you know the same thing that was transferred when we were not using the ink type the temp name is a location where the file is temporarily stored on the server. Imagine this, you're sending something to the server, but the server doesn't know where to save this because it has to save it somewhere because the browser has already sent it. So before the user is actually use, going to use it, 
it is going to save it somewhere. This is a temporary location on the server. So this file that you're sending is stored inside this temporary location. The next thing that we have is the type of the file. The type is, you know, the, the type which is image slash PNG. Uh, different files have different, different types. So this will store the type of the image. Then we have the size of the image, which is in bytes. And then the final thing we have error. Error is like zero or one. So error one means it is there has there there was an error while sending your file, and zero means there was no error while sending your file. Now what does the error mean, and why does error happen? Now error happen because uh, you know that whenever you are trying to upload um, send a message from the browser to the server, it is sent by using TCP packets. Each packet has a fixed size, and internet uses a protocol. Uh, called IP which is sends this data whatever you are sending the packets through a path in the network through different you know uh, points inside your uh, network these points are not the same because based on whichever is free or busy it uses this data to send the packets but the packets as I told you has a fixed size now suppose you're uploading an image of one gigabyte now, if you want to send this one gigabyte file, you cannot send it completely as one gigabyte. You have to break it down. And then you have to send this through different paths in the network until all the path reaches to the destination. Okay? So once they reach the destination, on top of IP, the internet uses the TCP protocol. In the TCP protocol, every part has its own sender and receiver. So when the receiver receives all these packets, it tries to combine them together in the same order because they will be they will be ordered, and then try to recreate the one file that you have sent, which is in one, which is of one gigabytes. So when it gets these files together, maybe you are sending it because IP is not a end-to-end -end network. What does that mean? Is that you know if a packet is lost, then you cannot get you cannot do it you cannot get it back again. So you have to make a request completely again. Okay. So what do you do? You know, you may have seen this, that you are downloading a file and, and while you downloaded the file, you try to open it and it says the file is corrupted. What does that mean? We, we, we thought that, okay, yeah, something happened to the file, maybe the file was not correct. But the original thing that happened is the file while transferring lost one of its packet in the way, you know, internet connection is not 100% uh, active all the time. One of the endpoint or one of the routers in the middle of the network may have dropped your packet, which is possible. So if they drop this packet, uh, we need to know that uh, the whole message is received or not because we cannot use a file which has which is incomplete, right? We cannot show, let's say, a, a PDF file which is the text doesn't make any sense because one packet is missing because it's all uh, binary. So what happened here is this error will tell me that if the file that was received by the server is complete or not. If it is not complete, then the error will be one. And we don't want to use an error file. Because if it's error, the file has errors, then it is useless for us. So we need either to make a request again, or we say that, sorry, the query was not executed and we don't use the file at all because the file is not complete. Okay, so this is what is happened over there. Um, so we have name, temp name, type, size, and error. So the temp name, as I said, is a temporary location where the file is actually stored. Okay, uh, so let's go back to our page and see this. This is what is sent. So image is the name, the first dimension, which has five, you know, second dimensions inside them. Okay, a row with five columns inside them. And what are these five? We have name, as I mentioned earlier, which is the name of the file. It has this type, which is image or slash png. And then we have the time or the temp name, which has a, a directory location in the server where temporary files are stored. You know, it's a random number. It's, it has a random string. So that's this file is stored in a random place until you move it. Because this is there for temporary place only. It might get deleted later on. So you have to move it. Otherwise, you know, you will lose, you will, you, you will lose the image itself or the uh, file that you're sending. An error is zero over here because my file was transferred correctly and then we have size which is in bytes okay 
So this is the files array. So what we need to do is use this array to upload our file. Okay, so let's go back and start our process. So we were in step, we were finished the step one. In step two, we were trying to get understand the files array, but we have to store everything from the files into variables so we can use them later on in the program. So let's go back to our files array, uh, our code, and this time I'm going to go down over here. I'm going to remove the you know this uh, uh, code and let's add the steps. Okay, so I'm going to sorry uh, step. Three, step two over here get file information okay so I'm going to store all the file information that I receive which is the five things okay so dollar file underscore name is equal to dollar underscore files the first dimension as I told you will be the name of my image so the name of the image in the form you see over here is image itself so I'm going to use that the second dimension will be fixed because if I want the name, it will be inside the name. Okay, let's go back to the second one, which is the temp name dollar underscore files. And again, the same thing, it will be inside uh, image. And this one, will, it will be inside the TMP underscore name. And then we will have the uh, type. And then we have the, uh, what did we have? We have error. I want to do the error last. Uh, we had the size, right? Yes, size. Okay, and finally the error. So these are the five things that I sent that the file that is included inside the files array: the name, temp name, uh, type, size, and array. So I stored everything. Uh, I received everything from the files array and I stored them inside my variable, so I can use them inside my code easily. Uh, 